So let's have a look at uh, vCenter 5 uh, based on the ESXi technology. So we can actually access our virtual images either through a, a web browser or through a host, our host client. Okay, so we'll just we'll just log in over here. Normally giving our domain. Our username. Okay, so we're accessing uh, the vCenter remotely. Uh, so there is some lag here as we're going through the whole of the internet. And we're just connecting through our client. Our client gives us more information if we want it, uh, but we can do most of the management uh, through our our web browser interface for the web client. Just takes a little minute to connect. Okay, so this gives us our, our basic interface for vCenter 5, the, the web interface. So if we just look around here. So what we do is we create a data center and then within the data center we create our cluster. So these are the ESXi nodes that we have here and in this case we actually have another node which is providing us with the main management for the infrastructure but these three nodes here are providing our main cluster nodes for the, the VMs that are actually running. We can segment into different areas such as management, uh, production and staging. Normally management would have high priority followed by production with lower priority and then we have staging which has the lowest priority of all. So in this way we make sure that the VMs with inside the high priority areas have a good a, a good amount of the, the system time and cannot be swamped by other VMs in a lower priority area. Okay, so so from here we can actually have a look at all the VMs that we're running on each of the machines gives us the the tasks uh, so we can see here some of the tasks that we've had we can have a look at the, the key events that have happened some basic performance statistics around the machine and give us a basic graph of the the system and we can generate some some simple graphs around that so we can see here here's the CPU utilization so overall we have peaked about 18% for our CPU uh, today at about 3 3 a.m. and it give us an idea of the alarms okay, so from here we can actually look at the virtual machines that are running on each of the hosts and we can tell if the the labs are actually uh, the the VMs are actually powered on or not, and they're they're host. Then we can look at the networks that are hosted, and also for the storage. This tab here allows us to look at uh, our our VMs and templates. This time it's organised into the the main areas and we can then segment them into the different folders so in this case this one uh, has all the linux vms that are running as we can see we can have a look at one of these this one is running on the SOC ESX3 server We can get some basic information on it, such as the number of CPUs that are being used, the memory, and and so on, and also the IP address that it's been allocated. Okay, 
Okay, so this is a VM running Linux. What we'll do is we'll power it on. We can see here it's running with one CPU, half a gigabyte of memory, 20 gigabyte hard disk. And there's the network adapter. We can mount a CD drive and so on if we edit the settings here. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll start the VM up and then we'll just connect to it. So within Firefox we need to install the, the browser plugin for it. It just takes a little minute to power it up. So one of the great strengths of vCenter is that we can actually run our VMs with inside a web browser and this obviously makes it easier for compatibility for a whole range of devices. Okay, so while that, that boots up, oh, there, there, there is that. Okay, so our VM has booted up. What we'll do is we'll log in. addresses and so we can see here that uh, we're on the 192.168 subnet we can see the mask is here so this is the network part and this is the host part so everything every host with inside this network should be able to see uh, every other host which starts with those two IP addresses okay so we can power on we can power off and so on and we should be able to link to all the other VMs if we connect to the same fence network this shows our data stores that we have. Okay, so we can have a range of these. We can have our iOSs stored in a certain place. And we can also define our networks. We can create a new network that we can connect to. Uh, so in this case, we just have a fence network. And it should show us the hosts that are connected to it. And we can actually monitor it. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just power this one off. go back and we can see the little image of it and there's the CPU being the memory being used uh, it should drop down once we once it's, it's booted up for a while but what we'll do is we'll just disconnect it just now if we wanted to, to mount a USB drive and so on from our host our machine here then we can actually add it with inside them okay but what we'll do is we'll just power that off. And then we'll have a look at the the client. So the client gives us a much richer interface. So we'll have a look here. So we can see that we have an alarm there. So we can look at all our inventory for it. At the top level. We can look at our data centers. We've got one data center here with uh, four hosts and 85 virtual machines. We can look at all the VMs that are running overall. And it should give us an indication of the CPU. This is quite good for identifying uh, VMs which are, are using too much of the resources. We can see our hosts from here. The memory they're using, the CPU tasks 
something that have happened. I should show all the, the boots so we can actually see here. This was me uh, booting up uh, the VM and there it's been powered off. We can look at all our alarms, some of the permissions and so on. Okay, so we can look at the host and clusters that we've seen before, the VMs, the data stores and the networking as we did. We can have a look at the roles and sessions that are current uh, just now. We can have a map of the whole infrastructure. It shows the host to VM. We could look at the host to the networks and, and so on. And we look, can look at uh, various relationships. The main place we want to look is possibly within something like uh, the production area. So you can see the production area here that lab users have permission here with inside this, this area. But within other areas, the lab user does not have any rights, so cannot see anything. So we have uh, our main management uh, area where we're running vCenter. And then over here, we have our VM. So let's look at the details that we get here. So we can start and stop the VM from here. You get a basic summary of the VM as it's running. So you can see this one is actually running just now. There's the IP address uh, and so on. There's all the details, the storage area, the network, and so on. These are the resources that's been allocated. It's basic performance. So here we can get some graphs on on the the previous CPU utilization and so on. And there we go. So we can see a peak there, but we can look at different days. We can look at a week, a month, and so on, and we can add new graphs to it. And we might want to look at the power. We can see here, here's the, the wattage usage of that VM. And we have a look to see some, some of the tasks involved and the alarms on it. And then the console will be able to actually, we'll be able to look at the, the VM. What we need to do is send a control delete. some permissions on that then we can look at the maps again this shows us how this VM relates to the to the rest of the cluster and then on to some storage views Okay, so we can see that uh, the vCenter 5 is, is, is an amazing piece of technology uh, that uh, allows for the creation of VMs and management of them through the web interface or through, through the client.